Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I got a video for you just kind of going through what Databricks is and just giving you a guide, you know, as a new user, how you can make use of Databricks. Um, so Databricks, uh, just to kind of give you a basic introduction to what it actually is. Um, it is a unified data analytics platform. Uh, and that is a fancy way to say it is a uh, managed Spark environment with tooling around to actually give you more out of uh, your Spark instance. So it allows you to, you know, have multiple teams and here's just some of their, you know, uh, marketing material where you can share all of your data across all of your teams. You have this environment where, you know, hey, I can write SQL queries on any of my data, all of my data engineers can work on this, use the really high processing power of Spark to actually process data for, you know, analytics jobs, for, uh, you know, just big data processing, for ML, really for anything, um, using, originally, you know, mainly SQL, but also Python uh, through Py, uh, PySpark and other ways to actually manipulate your data. So this kind of makes more sense if you just first break down, you know, hey, how is this actually run? So when you first get started with Databricks, you'll need to create a compute cluster. Um, and so a compute cluster is essentially just a Spark environment. So if I go to hit create compute, personal compute. So here we have scale and Spark. Um, you also have different tools if you want to use uh, ML uh, optimized clusters that you can see the configuration here, you know, what type of workers, what's going to be doing your analytics, your actual data processing, set policies, choose which user is going to be on here. Um, and then, you know, you create your compute. So after you've created your compute, and something to note here is I'm using the Azure uh, incorporated version of Databricks. So the reason I'm doing that is just it's easy to just spin up a Databricks environment without having to then hook it up to a external cloud service. So if you go to the Databricks website, provisioning your Databricks environment, you're still going to need to have an AWS account or a Google Cloud account and then link or an Azure account and link it to Databricks to actually build these compute clusters. So a Spark cluster, Scala cluster, whatever. Um, and so then here, you know, on your libraries, you can install uh, libraries like, you know, the ability to run uh, PySpark. So here, let's go. Uh, or let's say I want to connect to Snowflake. So if I go Spark packages, maybe even Central, uh, Snowflake, have different you know connectors for Snowflake that you can install if you wanted to connect to a Snowflake database from this Spark environment. Um, so now that I have my compute, then the way you kind of work and interact with this is you have you know a local uh, data catalog that you can use that will you know store. It's a Hive database. You can start a warehouse here um, and store your data within a warehouse, or you can ingest it from external locations. So something like Snowflake, uh, you know, maybe you want to bring in uh, information from Kafka, uh, Postgres, really whatever. It has a lot of different ways that make it easy for bringing data into Databricks. I will say with experience, it has a little bit of trouble bringing data back out of Databricks, but that's neither here nor there. It's a lot of different ways where, hey, you know, I can connect to Snowflake. And then what this will do is um, actually create a new database or new worksheet where it's going to show me, hey, this is how I can connect to Snowflake using Databricks. So there isn't like a connection management UI where you like create a connection object. You actually have to add them to your scripts. So here we're going to create a uh, Snowflake database. Um, and then here we'll use a there's a few different options of like, you know, how we can connect to it. So here um, we're going to reference the format we defined of Snowflake, uh, give it our options that we saved in that array, um, and then some additional options for database table, table name, creating a data set, and then saving it, um, saving those five values in the range. So this is just range just creates five, one, two, three, four, five. Then we'll read the data from that previous cell if we wanted to, bring it back out of Snowflake. Um, and then you can also, you know, write it to a local Delta table as well. So Delta tables are just like local Databricks tables. So if I go into, where is it? Um, Delta live tables, you can see, um, you know, let's create a pipeline from sample data, sample test, um, and then we'll cluster policy none, create. And then what this will do is, is just hit start.
create basically just kind of a local way to store data, visualize it. So if you want to interact with data within the context of, da of Databricks, you have that option here. Um, and so you can see Delta Live tables have all of your different tables here. Um, and so this will just be setting up using some example dummy data that Databricks provides. So you can also go in, add additional you know, SQL warehouses, um, stop them, so stop this one, create a new one. So here you can choose a different cluster size. So these are basically serverless warehouses that are uh, able to store all of your backend data um, and just do a little more efficiently than putting it into a Spark cluster. And so then you also can go into SQL Editor, you know, to find SQL queries that you're going to use, chart previews, um, you know, just a way to look at chart and visualize information within Databricks. And so here, um, what we have is actually this create sample pipeline. So the reason I did this is so you can kind of see what an example pipeline looks like within Databricks. So typically what you'll be doing is, you know, you'll ingest some data. So here, you know, imagine this is ingesting it from just a sample data sets, but you're bringing in from maybe your uh, Snowflake data warehouse, uh, bringing in as a CSV, all the information about your customers. Uh, then we're also bringing in a, another table around sales orders. Uh, then we're going to join the customers to the sales information so that we have, you know, all these sales that a customer's made. Then we're going to just look at all the sales orders that were made in LA from all the customers that were in LA. Uh, we're also gonna make a different table for sales orders in Chicago. Um, so similarly, just to create some uh, local visualization with those Delta Live tables. So here, if we go over to uh, back over to our Delta Live tables. And so this, you know, you don't have to use Delta Live tables. I'm just using this because it's convenient and within the Snowflake or within the Databricks environment. Um, but typically what you're gonna be doing with Databricks is taking in some data, doing some transformations on it, and then feeding it out to, you know, an external or internal analytics service like, you know, does live tables, we're bringing it out to Power BI, to uh, what, what's hot, Tableau, um, any, any, any of your analytics tools, that's what you'll kind of hook out at the end of your Databricks workflow. So Databricks is really kind of an ETL and data analytics processing engine, um, and so, as you can imagine, since it's really good at processing really large amounts of data really quickly. It's really good for ML workloads um, because you know you can create pipelines to ingest data from various sources for ML um, and just a lot of functionality around here for actual analytics jobs. Um, and then you know you have your different compute clusters. Uh, I got to switch to a different subscription, um, but a lot of different ways to interact with your data as well. Um, so. If I want to create, let's say, a new notebook, you also have uh, native integrations, ML flow. Um, you have a lake view dashboard. So a data lake is, you know, having all of your data actually live within Databricks and then using Databricks to transform it, query it when you need it. Um, so just, you know, something they really promote. And so here within a single notebook, you know, I can have Python, I can have SQL commands, I can move between them pretty interchangeably. The only issue is there's not really a really smooth way to pass data between tasks. You just have to kind of like send it. You know, if I write a SQL command, I'm gonna have to just send that into a database and then use a Python command next to actually pull that out of the database. So it's not like Airflow where you can kind of have that nice connection passing. Um, but you can also integrate Databricks with Airflow uh, to just do the stuff that you need to do on Databricks, high-speed analytics processing, and then use cheaper uh, compute for the rest of your tasks. Um, so a lot of different options you can go through in terms of you know how you're going to manage your Databricks workflows as well. Um, obviously, you know I'm an Airflow shill, so you should use Databricks and Airflow, and I have a video just on that. But uh, in general, you know Databricks does provide a lot of different functionality here. Um, you have you know workflows, which is kind of like Databricks pipelines light. Um, they've installed the Grid UI, which is pretty funny. Um, and just in general, a lot of tooling around managing you know, alerts. Uh, doing these kind of transformations in a structured and managed way. So really, really great and almost essential, I would, uh, yeah, essential part of the modern data stack for doing a lot of these uh, really large scale data transformations, uh, consistent data processing for analytics workloads. And then, you know, with AI ML, you know, they even have a full section for machine learning now where you can add different experiments. Uh, I think they have an integration with uh, AutoML or MLflow. Um, you can save your ML models within here and actually use Databricks for model training as well. Um, and so 
obviously, since you know most of actually doing ML work is training your models, uh, it's not that bad of an option to have uh, Databricks also just run your models uh, on that Spark cluster. Um, so a lot of optionality here. Hope this was a useful video for anyone that was thinking about exploring Databricks. Um, and yeah, that is really it. So hope this helped. Again, uh, sorry, I just repeated myself. If you did, like, subscribe, or if you didn't, let me know what you would like to see. That would help you in the comments below. Um, I but live to serve. So without further ado, Data Guy out. See you soon. Peace.